Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and do a guide problem with our R Commander program specifically focused on a Poisson distribution. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So let's read our scenario. A fitness club is trying to determine if they should replace their cardio class. They know that on average, uh, seven people show up uh, per class. And let's go ahead and let's get a new one. Okay, so we are given some rate. So this is our lambda. And we'll say that lambda equals seven people per class. All right, so we need to check to make sure like are all the successes independent of one another. That's like an okay assumption to make. Um, are all of the, um, it can't be possible that everybody shows up at exactly the same time. So the success, that the successes don't happen at identical times now they might have to really really close like we might talk about like when somebody walks into the room that that would be you know they'd be considered as coming to class and if you really get you know like a measure a laser and really measure it like nobody shows up in the class at the exact same time so uh, it looks like that we're okay to have a binomial situation and okay so we start off by first the gym's target class size is nine and what is the probability that exactly nine show up? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to build our probability table for our lambda example. So let's go back to our commander and go to our basic statistics, our discrete random variables, our, disc our random variables, sorry, and then discrete distributions, go to Poisson, and let's do the Poisson probabilities. So up here, it's just asking for one thing, and it's just asking for the mean. Well, remember that for a Poisson distribution, that mu, which is just equal to like, you know, the u, normally it's got a bigger tail on it for Greek, but we'll leave it like that, is also equal to lambda, which is equal to seven people. Okay, so that's super handy. So for our Poisson probabilities, literally the only thing we have to do is type in lambda which is our seven. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And notice how we have the same problem as we've had like with the binomial distribution is that it just gives us the PMF. Nice thing is, is it's the exact same way to fix it as before. So I can highlight this probability and I'm going to cut it out of here. I'm going to paste it below. And in here I'm going to say that I want my PMF to equal the probability and I want my CDF to equal the cumulative sum or cum sum of probability. Don't forget to include your extra backwards parentheses so that you should have two at the end of this line. Once you get that you can highlight and submit it. Now one thing to be aware of is that a lot of times uh, you will see that like if our if our lambda was bigger uh, what our commander is going to do is it's going to only give us the range for which most of the probabilities exist so what you might see let's say if I had a lambda or let's say it actually looked something like this I'm going to just edit those zeros to fives real quick and I'll click submit and notice how I'm just getting this kind of truncated range. This happens a lot. But let's say you want to go from zero. All you have to do is just kind of go up here and look at, uh, look in the code. And where it has those fives for the original, uh, you could just change those back or two zeros. And you'll be able to start from zero. Anyhow, it's just one little trick. Uh, also remember the probability mass function and the cumulative distribution function extend forever. Notice how the CDF does not sum up to one. This is not a rounding error. This is just kind of one of those facts about the Poisson distribution that the PMF extends to infinity. Okay, but we've kind of got this range and we want to know what the gym's target class size is nine. What's the probability that exactly nine show up? So all we'd have to go is over and look at the nine and we could copy that probability and we could paste it in. 
Okay, fantastic. That was, that was pretty easy. The next question is, is what is the probability that at least nine attend? So before we do that, let's kind of get back, oops, sorry, into our text editor real quick. And what we just did was the probability of x equaling nine, and we found that to be this kind of 10% thing. So our next question is the probability that at least nine occur, or that our random event is gonna be less than or, or greater than or equal to nine. That's how we can say at least. Now what we are tempted to do is just go over, look at the CDF and plug it in. The problem with that is that is giving us the probability of nine or less. I want the probability of nine or more. Now, one of the tricks that we had done is that we had just like added up all the PMFs above. The problem with this is that we can't do that actually with, uh, with a Poisson because this guy extends to infinity. So we'd be adding stuff for a really long time. But here's what we can do. We can do a complement and we could say one minus the probability of X being less than or equal to eight. And this would give us, so if I did one minus this CDF, this would give me the probability of being nine or greater. And we can go ahead and do that. So I'll just say one minus the probability of less than or equal to eight is gonna give me the probability of greater than or equal to nine. And I get this kind of 30% thing. Or sorry, like 27%. And I'll just paste that in. All right, so they decide if the probability of four or fewer attending the cardio class exceeds 15%, they will cut the class. What is their decision? Okay, so if we come over here and we look at the probability of four or fewer, so what we're looking for in this one is the probability of the random event being less than or equal to four. Nice thing is we can just grab that from our CDF. So if we grabbed it from the CDF, we'd grab this guy less than or equal to four, and it equals 17. So let's just double check. They decided the probability of four or fewer exceeds 15%, they will cut the class. So it exceeds 15%, it's 17%, so they decide to cut the class. Okay, the instructor though comes back and argues, say this, the instructor argues that this is a little bit unfair as other class like hers that meet three times a week are based off the metric of number of participants per week. Under this, what is the probability that 10 or fewer uh, attending the cardio dance class per week? Okay, so the problem with this one is we are not under the same lambda. This lambda is uh, how many people? Seven people per class. But what we have just been asked is that, hey, we actually need to deal with um, people per week. So what we need to do is we need to scale this guy up. And we know that per week there are actually three classes. So what we've got right now is we've got seven, here, I'll put it in parentheses, of seven people, people per class. And what we want to know is how many people, sorry, people per week. Well, for this lady, that is also equal to the number, let's go, give me a second, the question mark people per three classes. Okay, so what we can do to get this is we can multiply three classes by on both sides of the equation, which would get it rid of on this side and get rid of the class on the other side. And so what we wind up for this one is we wind up getting this lambda of 21 people per three classes is the same as seven people per class. It gives us the same uh, kind of ratio. Okay, so now we need to kind of build a new CDF, a new PMF. So we need to go back to our probabilities, we do our discrete Poisson, Poisson probabilities, 
And instead of seven, now we need to have the number 21. And we can go ahead and click OK. And notice how it only goes from eight to 38. And that, that's actually OK. Um, if you want to expand it, we can. But we can also use the like exact same equation kind of modification that we used above. So I'm just going to do some copying and pasting. So the first thing that I'm going to do, oops. So oops, wow, all sorts of problems. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this out. Cut our probability. We're going to paste it in here. Now I'm actually going to copy this PMF probability thing. Because we used variables, uh, it just it works when we paste it back down. Because the only thing that changed was this kind of probability section. And our request for the PMF and the CDF is universal. Which is now, while it is very nice that this works, this cumulative sum only works if we start this out at zero. So we really do have to go back and make sure that our Poisson table starts at zero, and then it can go to whatever value, but our CDF will be messed up if we don't start it off at zero. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, with, uh, with some of these probabilities that, that we are working with and uh, we kind of want to keep that uh, in our heads. Okay, so when we are dealing with that, now all we need to do is just go ahead and submit that. And we can come down to our probability tables and our statements. And what we need to do is look at the probability that 10 or fewer are attending this cardio dance class. So we can just go to the CDF and grab that 10 or fewer. We can copy that and we can paste it in here. And if we are comparing back to that 15%, and under this new metric, there's only like, you know, half a percent chance uh, of, uh, of actually having that occur, of having 10 or fewer. So under the different metric, we would keep it. And we can go ahead and submit. Oh, sorry. Let's go ahead and submit that. And we see that, yes, in fact, uh, we got uh, the right answer. Uh, from our table. So we just have to remember that with this particular method that we use, we need to make sure that the Poisson uh, table starts at zero. Uh, so that'll help us out with our CDF, making sure that that gets out correctly. But uh, that's that's basically Poisson in a nutshell. Uh, we could ask like given questions, we'd ask intersection or union questions or complements, just like we've done with binomials. They all still hold here, um, but what we kind of have to practice with and play with is what happens if we partway through are starting to deal with a new rate, right? The first one was people per class, and down here it's, it's people per week. And we had to figure out how many classes there were in a week, and we figured out there was three, and so we changed our lambda to 21, and we were able to run it again and get a new uh, probability for you know here being less than this metric of 10 instead of this metric of four as before anyhow so that's our poisson in a nutshell and good luck